I, 25M, have a chance to date my old HS crush, 25F, but I'm engaged to my fiancé, 24F. I had a crush on this girl Carla since middle school going into HS, but she never paid me no mind. I left for the military and met Sarah, who is nurse and wants to become a doctor nurse practitioner. Sarah was the usual type of girl I dated. I left the military to do contracting work and moved back to my home state. One day while I was getting drinks at the bar, Carla was my bartender. She didn't recognize me, but when I told her my name, she couldn't believe it. She said she couldn't believe how much I changed. I started becoming a regular and eventually exchanged contact information with her to catch up. Throughout this time, she told me she has a crush on me even though she knows I have a fiancé. She said she likes how driven I am. Now I'm conflicted. She says that she will give me time to think about what I want to do. My fiancé and I are doing great, but I feel like she's normally the type of woman I always get. Carla, I never had the opportunity or thought I would. I don't want to hurt Sarah, but feel like I would regret this forever if I don't pursue it. The next few days felt like a whirlwind. I couldn't get Carla out of my head. Every time Sarah smiled at me or asked me about my day, guilt twisted in my chest. She was everything I thought I wanted, steady, caring, and supportive. But something about Carla stirred a sense of possibility, of excitement I thought I'd left behind in high school. I tried to distract myself, focusing on work and avoiding the bar where Carla worked. But one evening, I found myself sitting in my car outside her place, staring at my phone, her number ready to be dialed. My heart raced. I wasn't sure if I wanted to see her or if I just wanted to clear my head. I pressed call. Carla picked up almost immediately. Hey, she said, her voice smooth and familiar, yet still carrying that spark of intrigue. Hey, I replied, trying to sound casual, but the tension was unmistakable. Can we talk? Sure. Come over. I hesitated. Was this the right choice? But I drove to her place anyway, my mind spinning with questions. What if this was a mistake? What if pursuing something with Carla meant losing Sarah forever? But then, what if not pursuing it left me wondering what if for the rest of my life? When I got to Carla's apartment, she opened the door, smiling in that way that always made me feel like a nervous kid again. I knew you'd come she said softly. We sat on her couch, awkward silence stretching between us. I wanted to be honest, to explain how conflicted I felt, but the words tangled in my throat. I get it, Carla said finally. You don't want to hurt Sarah, and I respect that. But you also need to figure out what's right for you. You can't live your life based on what's expected or safe. Her words hit hard. I had spent so much time making the right decisions but now I wasn't sure if they were right for me or just what I thought everyone else wanted from me. The night blurred as we kept talking, each word making me feel closer to Carla in a way I hadn't expected. And when I left, I knew I was standing at a crossroads. The next step was mine to take. I couldn't believe I had done it. After days and weeks of inner turmoil, I finally found the courage to tell Sarah that the wedding was off. Her eyes usually so full of warmth and understanding, now seemed empty, as if she couldn't quite grasp what had just happened. Why? Her voice trembled, but she was trying to stay calm. We were happy. I thought everything was fine. Everything I said sounded weak and useless. It's not about you. It's about me. She looked at me with a pain I had never seen in her eyes before. It was like in one moment all her expectations all her hopes for the future, came crashing down. I could feel the distance between us growing wider with every second of silence. Sarah left without saying goodbye, and I was left alone in our apartment. The emptiness that filled the room after she walked out was unbearable. I looked around at everything. Pictures, her favorite blanket on the couch, the plans we had made together that once felt so solid, now seemed meaningless. The realization of what I had lost hit me in waves. On one side, there was relief, a sense of freedom, like I had finally stopped pretending that everything was perfect. I knew I wasn't lying to her or to myself anymore. But with that came overwhelming guilt. I had hurt someone who deserved better. Sarah wasn't just my fiancé, 
She was someone who had supported me in everything. But now, every memory of her felt like a fresh wound. All her care, her smiles, our moments of happiness. I had destroyed them in an instant. I didn't know exactly what Sarah was feeling in that moment. But I imagined her heart was shattered. Maybe she was trying to figure out where everything went wrong. Maybe she blamed herself, searching for reasons when, in reality, it was all about my own doubts and how I felt out of place. The sense of loss was now twofold. I had lost not only Sarah, but also a part of myself that felt secure and grounded with her. And in this new reality, I was left alone, faced with uncertainty, with Carla, and with a future that had suddenly become something entirely different. After I called off the wedding with Sarah, my meetings with Carla became regular. I started spending more and more time with her. At first, it felt right. I felt free and light in a way I hadn't in a long time. Carla was fun, energetic, and life with her seemed more spontaneous and exciting. But over time, something began to change. I noticed that her attention toward me wasn't as deep as I had expected. Yes, she often said she liked me, that she'd had a crush on me for a long time. But those words sounded superficial. With each new date, I felt more and more that she was using me. Not to be with me, but rather as a way to get something she was missing in her life. Attention, excitement, enjoyment. Sometimes, when we were sitting in a bar or walking around, I caught myself thinking that her gaze was distant. She talked to me, laughed, but her eyes didn't show what I had expected, that depth of feeling I once knew with Sarah. Instead, I saw selfish interest. She was more interested in the process than in me. Doubt started to fill my mind. At first, I tried to justify her behavior. Maybe that's just how she shows love. Maybe she needed time to open up her true feelings. But the more time we spent together, the more I realized Carla wasn't giving me what I was looking for. I didn't feel loved. Instead, I started to feel like something temporary, something she used for entertainment or to validate herself. One day, after another evening with Carla, I came home and sat in silence, lost in thought. I realized that even though I had achieved what I had once wanted so badly, I had lost something far more important. My life with Sarah had been stable, genuine, and real. With Carla, everything was shallow, lacking true connection. The thought hit me hard. I had changed not only my life, but also someone else's for something that turned out to be an illusion. Carla wasn't the girl I had once idealized, and now I realized it too late. Inside, I felt emptiness, and regret began to creep in, slowly but surely. I started to understand that I had made a choice not based on love, but on fantasies of what could have been. Now I faced a new dilemma. What to do next? Going back to Sarah seemed impossible. But staying with Carla, knowing that I was just another distraction for her, was also a mistake. I felt trapped by my own decisions, realizing that I had missed the chance for real happiness. After everything that had happened, I started to feel like a traitor. Every time I looked at Carla or spent time with her, the guilt inside me grew. I thought Carla was what I had been missing in my life, the chance for something new and unexplored. But now that I knew the truth, that illusion had shattered, leaving only emptiness inside. Each day became harder to bear. I felt lonely, even when Carla was around. She was caught up in something else. Maybe her own world, her own problems, her own interests, but certainly not in me. I began to realize that she never really cared about who I was. She just saw me as a way to escape her own issues. And in those moments when I was alone, my thoughts kept drifting back to Sarah. At first, I tried to push them away to convince myself I had made the right choice. But the more I thought about it, the clearer it became. I had made a mistake. I had betrayed Sarah. The person who truly loved me, who had been by my side during the hardest times supporting me. The sense of emptiness was growing inside me like a heavy burden I could no longer ignore. I looked at my life and realized it had lost its meaning. Without Sarah, everything seemed dull, lacking the joy and warmth it once had. I no longer felt the stability, the genuine love that Sarah had given me. Now, I was alone 
tangled in my mistakes and lost opportunities. Regret washed over me in waves. I knew I had destroyed a relationship with the only person who truly loved me. All I wanted now was to get Sarah back. To bring back her smile, her warmth, her loyalty. But how could I do that after I had hurt her so deeply? Would I even find the strength to ask for forgiveness and try to make things right? I didn't know how she would respond to my return. Maybe I had already lost her forever. But I also knew I couldn't keep living with this guilt and emptiness. I had to try, at least. Even if the chances were slim, I realized that my only path to true happiness was to try to win Sarah back and tell her everything I was feeling. The realization that I'd lost Sarah was unbearable. But now that I knew what I wanted, I had to figure out how to get her back. Just apologizing didn't seem enough. I knew I had to show her that I had changed, that I had truly realized my mistake. She deserved something more than a simple, I'm sorry. I started to remember all the moments we'd spent together. How she always understood me without words. How supportive she was when I felt lost. I knew I had to prove to her that she was the one for me. That I was willing to fight for her. The first step was to contact her. Not just through a text or call. That seemed too trivial for what I wanted to express. I needed something special. I decided to write her a letter explaining in detail everything I felt. It had to be not just an apology, but a frank admission that I had made a mistake, that I had only realized the value of our relationship after I had lost it. I put all my regret and desire for a fresh start into that letter. Then I remembered how much the little things meant to us, those small gestures that made our relationship special. She had always loved nature, and we often walked together in parks. I decided to invite her to our favorite walk in the park to meet, and talk face to face. But just inviting her would not be enough. I thought about preparing something special, a place where we could talk quietly away from prying eyes. I also knew that sincerity was important to Sarah, and I needed to be brutally honest. When we met in the park, I saw a mixture of bewilderment and pain in her eyes. But I knew this was my only chance, and I couldn't let it go. We sat down on our bench the same bench where we had once discussed our future, our dreams, our plans. I began to speak. The words came out with difficulty, but I opened up to her about everything I was feeling, about how deeply I regretted, how I realized she was the best part of my life, how I'd made the mistake of being infatuated with Carla and the illusions that could never give me true happiness. I can't undo the past, I said, feeling everything inside clench with tension. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to prove that you're the most important thing to me. She was silent for a few minutes, and the silence was unbearable. I didn't know if she would forgive me, but that silence was part of her thinking. Her eyes spoke more than words. She saw my efforts, my sincere remorse. On that day, we said goodbye. Don't say another word to each other. A week later, I asked her out again. I was drawn to her. When I arrived at the meeting, my palms were nervously clenched into fists. I chose a small cafe where we used to be greeted with the aroma of coffee and sincere smiles. But today, everything looked completely different. The atmosphere was tense, like before a thunderstorm. She arrived on time, and my attention immediately fell on how her appearance had changed. The sad eyes that had once sparkled with joy now seemed heavy with worry. We were sitting at a table, but there was an invisible wall between us. I tried to smile, but my smile was angular, somehow tired. She responded with a polite nod, but her voice sounded quiet and reserved. From the moment I spoke, things got even more complicated. I tried to explain why I had decided to contact her, but the words were stuck somewhere in my throat. Each of us was afraid to say too much, lest we cause new wounds. I recalled happy moments, our joint plans, but the more I spoke, the more vividly I felt that all this was behind me. Why did you leave? She asked suddenly, and her voice sounded not only resentful, but also eager to understand. This phrase melted the last remnants of tension, questions, and uncertainty. I answered that I could not bear my betrayal, deceiving her. And then, paradoxically, 
I realized that my love for her had not disappeared over time. I began to talk about my feelings, about how hard it was to live without her. We sat there, both hesitating between the past and the future, not knowing if we could trust each other again. There were no romantic gestures, no hugs, just hard thoughts and attempts to understand each other. The meeting turned out to be different from what I had imagined, without smiles and hopes, but it was an important step in our story. A heavy silence hung in the air, and I had the feeling that the end was in sight. She looked at me, a dubious determination in her eyes, and these looks sparked hope in my heart that maybe things could still be fixed. But her next words shattered that hope. I cannot continue this relationship. She said quietly, but clearly, like late autumn that came uninvited. This story has to end. She looked down at the table again, her hands nervously clasped together, and it became clear to me that she wasn't just saying this for the sake of formality. It was a sincere realization. I tried to argue, to explain why we should try again, but her eyes remained fixed on the tabletop, as if she wanted to escape my words. We will never be able to forgive each other, she added, her voice sounding like an echo of our past love giving way to pain. Your experiences and mine are so different, and unfortunately, this has become part of our journey. I felt all the disappointment coming out of my heart like smoke. The very image that I had been trying to keep in my heart, the image of our love turning into ruins. I felt that she was right. We were both carrying so many wounds that even forgiveness seemed out of reach. I wanted to say something, but the words escaped my lips. Now that I understood her decision, I realized that it might be the best thing. Leaving us in the past, at least with a request to keep the memories of those beautiful moments we had shared together. She looked up, and I noticed tears in her eyes, but they were not worth holding back. I realized that this meeting put an end to our story, even if it was hard to accept. We had become strangers, but deep down I knew that this was a decision to allow each of us to move forward, to look for new cozy colors in life. For me, it was a lesson in my life. I destroyed everything that was so important to me. I'm moving to another city, and now I'm going to start living my life, and I will never allow betrayal and lies again.